like to invite your attention to the Old Testament book of Lamentations. Lamentations. If you don't know where it is, just say table of contents. Lamentations. Lamentations. On the other side of Jeremiah. Lamentations. When you get there, please stand to your feet. You still don't know where it is, just say Bible study. Bible study. <laughs> If you got an app, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> Lamentations 3. Lamentations 3, verses 19 through 25. I'm going to be reading this morning from the New International Version of the text. and would ask that you read along with us from the screens that are before you. Hear now the word of the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new <laughs> every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those who hope, whose hope is in him. To the one who seeks him. The word of God for the people of God. Let the people say thanks be to God. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. We pray that God will amplify and then magnify his holy word so that we might be otherwise saved, sanctified, informed, and transformed. Please keep your Bibles open. Keep your Bibles open and look again with me for a point of emphasis at verses 22 and 23. Here's what it says. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new air morning. Great is, boy, church folk don't know this, your faithfulness. Under the unction and direction of the Holy Spirit, I want to preach track four and preach this from this thought. Great is thy faithfulness. Great, I need some hymn, some people who know some hymns to help me. Great is thy faithfulness. Come on, look at your neighbor and help me out real quick. Say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, great is, great is thy faithfulness. Come on, I need some folk who know he's faithful to look at your other neighbor and say it like you really mean it. Say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. Great, is great is thy faithfulness. Y'all ready? Let's go. My brothers and sisters, one of my favorite hymns of the church is the old hymn that's entitled, Great Is Thy Faithfulness. In this hymn, the hymn writer declares, Great Is Thy Faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Here comes a shout, all that I've needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. Uh, I believe this is one of those songs that you need to have in your spiritual playlist. Uh, this is one of those songs that you need to sing to yourself when you're going through. For I believe there's some folk up in here even now who can testify <laughs> that the God that we serve is faithful. Uh, I believe there's one or two folk who've made it through some things up in here who's not ashamed to lift up your hand and testify that the God we serve is straight up faithful. Oh, come on now. There's somebody here who can testify that the God we serve is a way maker. <laughs> That the God we serve is a battle fighter. 
that the God we serve is a bridge over every troubled water, that the God we serve is a comforter, that the God we serve is a sustainer, that the God we serve is a healer, that the God we serve is a provider. I need some faithful folk up in here who can testify that the God we serve is great and he's faithful. Uh, I, 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 I love today's text because... This is one of those texts that literally preaches all by itself. There are some scriptures that you need to work to unpack to help the people see the shout in the good news. But this text, uh, Lamentations 3, 19 through 25, doesn't need a whole lot of unpacking. No, this text has good news written all over it. This text ought to make you shout every time you hear it. This text ought to make you praise God every time you read it. But in order to fully appreciate the shout in the good news in the text, you first need to understand what the text is really all about. Watch. The book of Lamentations is actually a book, watch, of woe and sorrow. It's a book that captures the, the lamenting and the grieving and the mourning that has taken place with God's people because Jerusalem had been destroyed and captured by the Babylonian army. The, the writer of Lamentations then puts pen to paper to convey his sorrows, his suffering, and his anguish, which is why when you read this book, you'll come across words like darkness and pain, words like brokenness and desolation, words like despair and sorrow. Like the book of Job, Lamentations captures the feeling and the emotions of somebody, watch now, who knows God and yet is suffering anyhow. And that's a word right there because sometimes we think that just because we know God, we won't have to go through anything. Sometimes we think that just because we know God, we won't have to struggle. Sometimes we think that just because we know God, we won't have to suffer sometimes. Huh? If you listen and pay attention to some of today's preaching, it'll make you think huh, that if you pray right or just give right, you'll never have to go through anything. If you listen to some of today's preaching, it'll make you think that if your faith is right and your praise is right, that if you lift up holy hands, your life will be filled with champagne wishes, caviar dreams, and candy-coated raindrops. Some of today's preaching will make you think that believers don't have to carry any crosses, that believers won't have to go through anything, that prosperity and favor will always rest in your house if your faith and your praise is right. But that's not what the word of God teaches at all. For Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to carry a cross sometimes. Jesus said, if you follow me, you need to understand that in this world, you will have trouble. As a matter of fact, the old prophet Marvin Gaye in the song Trouble Man said it this way. There are three things in life that are certain taxes, death, in trouble and all that I'm trying to tell you is that all of us will end up going through some suffering sooner or later I'm talking about when mama gets sick I'm talking about when daddy gets sick I'm talking about when sickness takes over your body I'm talking about when your child goes astray I'm talking about when the doctor's report is not good I'm talking about when you get the pink slip on your job in other words if you have breath in your body then get ready because some struggle stress and strain is going to show up at your door sooner or I wish I had somebody we, 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 we don't know who the writer of Lamentations actually is but what we do know is that this writer is a believer who's suffering. What we do know is that this writer, watch, is trying to hold on to his faith during a time when God himself seems to be absent and silent. And if we were honest on today, I believe everybody up in here has gone through a season such as this. Everybody up in here has gone through a season where you were wondering where God is. I believe all of us in here have gone through a season where it seems like 
prayers are going up and praise is going up and nothing seems to be coming back down. I believe somebody here knows what it's like when it feels like God is absent and nowhere to be found in your life. Even Jesus went through a season like this for Jesus did declare from the cross, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And if Jesus arrived at a place where he felt the absence of God, then surely you and I will arrive at a place where we'll find ourselves wondering where God is. Here it is. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how spiritually deep you think you may be. All of us will go through a season of struggle. All of us will arrive at a place where we'll find ourselves uh, wondering where our God is. And if you don't believe me, just look at the text for the writer is going through. He's wondering where God is. He's suffering in a season of stress, strain, and struggle. It's right there in your Bibles. I'm in verse 19. For the writer says, I remember my affliction and my wandering. And here it is. It's all been full of bitterness and gall. And this word gall is a good Old Testament word for it literally means to be wounded. In other words, the writer is testifying that what he's gone through is wounding him deeply, which is why he declares in verse 20, I'm in your Bible, that his soul is now downcast. But what he says next is the part that makes me shout every time I read it. What he says next is the part that makes me praise God every time I read it. What he says next is always the part that blesses my soul. What does he say, preacher? Well, the writer says that in spite of all that he's been going through, in spite of all the wounds, and in spite of all the suffering, and in spite of all the struggle, the writer says, watch, this one thing I call to my mind, and this one thing gives me hope, and the, this that he's talking about is that he realized that the God that he served uh, is still faithful, that the God that he served was still able to come through. Here it is, no matter how dark your night may be, no matter how deep your suffering may be, you need to keep your hope in God and be encouraged. You need to learn how to shout in the midst of what you're going through. You need to learn how to praise God in spite of your troubles because the God we serve is faithful and he will show up and see you through. Okay, y'all still missing it. Let me try it this way. In the midst of all of the suffering, the writer, watch, apparently had a flashback. It's right there in verse 21. He flashed back and recalled something in his mind. We don't know what he recalled as a result of that flashback. Maybe it was a time when God showed up and healed his body. Uh, maybe it was a time when God provided exactly what he needed. Maybe it was a time when God showed up and defeated his enemies. Maybe it was a time when God forgave him of all his transgressions. Maybe it was a time when God blessed him with a peace that passes all understanding. We don't know exactly what he recalled when he had that flashback but what we do know is that the flashback prompted him to testify that because of God's great love we are not consumed for his compassions never fail verse 23 they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness here it is when you're going through baby you need to have a flashback you need to flashback and remember the last time that he made away. You need to flash back and remember the last time that he healed your body. You need to flash back and remember that last time that he brought you through. You need to flash back and remember the last time that you overcome. Is there anybody here who can testify uh, that God has blessed you with some testimonies? Is there anybody here who can testify that you would have never been sitting where you're sitting right now if God didn't show up and bring you through what you were going through? Is there anybody here who can testify that the car wreck should have killed you? Is there anybody here that can testify that the bankruptcy should have broken you? Is there anybody here who can testify that the divorce should have brought you down? Huh? But didn't God show up in the midst of it all? Didn't God show up and bless you to make you through? All that I'm trying to tell you is that every now and then, huh, in the midst of what you're going through on today, huh, you need to flash back and remember huh, what he did for you on yes y'all still missing it uh 
I, I need some old school people to help me right here. Anybody up in here remember that old singer by the name of Minnie Ripperton? Y'all remember Minnie, Minnie, Minnie had a song called Back Down Memory Lane? Come on now. Need some old folk to help me here. She said, I stumbled on the photograph. It kind of made me laugh. Took me way back, back down memory lane. All I'm trying to tell you is some of us need to take some trips back down memory lane and remember what he did for us on yesterday. Remember what he did for us on last week. Remember what he did for us on last month. Remember what he did for us just last year. Is there anybody here who can testify that you're still standing and still kicking because God showed up and brought you through? I, I can't speak for anybody else. But when I flash back and think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul still cries out. Hallelujah. You can sit there and look cute if you want to. But I stopped by to tell somebody about my God. I stopped by to tell you that great is his faithfulness. You need to loop that soundtrack in your playlist over and over again. Great is thy faithfulness. It is our God. Him is faithful. Say that again. Our God. I said he's faithful. Let me try it one more time. They say three times is a charm. Our God. I need somebody to help me preach. Is faithful. What that means is that regardless of what you might be going through, he will show up and see you through. Let me try it this way. The Bible says that all things will work together. Need some Bible readers to help me preach for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And the reason that it's going to work out for your good is because our God is faithful. And if you pay attention to the text, it'll tell you exactly why God is faithful. Let me show it to you. I'm going to get out your way. Watch. Here it is. Our God is faithful. It ain't deep. Watch. Because he loves us. Y'all missed the shelf. Let me try it again. I, I said he's faithful because he loves you. It's right there in the first part of verse 22. I'm preaching from the word of God. Watch. The text says that because of the Lord's great Love for us. None of us shall be consumed. I'm missing your shock. Let me try it again. Because God loves you, you're not going to be consumed by what you're going through. Because the Lord loves you, he ain't going to leave you hanging. Because the God, God loves you, watch, even when you fall down, he won't let you stay down. Because the Lord loves you, he will not let you be consumed by what you're going through. I wish those three Hebrew boys were in the house this morning. I'm talking about the ones who were in the fire. Because if they were in the house, they would testify. I went into the fire, but I did not get consumed by the fire. Because the Lord went in the fire ahead of me. And bless me and kept me even when I was in the fire. I need some folk who've been through some stuff uh, who can testify that you're still here because uh, God got into it when you were in it uh, and surrounded you by his love uh, and protected you. I need somebody to help me preach. The, the, the text says that God ain't going to leave you hanging. He loves you. And therefore, he's not going to let you be consumed. Watch, watch, watch. The word love in verse 22 actually comes from the Hebrew word that means, that says hest. And that word actually literally means, watch, an unbreakable devotion. In other words, God's love for us is unbreakable. Maybe that's why Paul said nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, nor the present nor the future, 
nor heights, nor depths, nor anything in all creation. Nothing, and I do mean nothing, can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. And here it is. Because God loves you, you can count on him to be faithful to you. Even when you're not faithful to him, he'll always be faithful to you. Simply because his love for you is downright unbreakable. Y'all still missing your shout. Let me help you see it. Uh, in the world of superheroes, Superman is unbreakable. Nothing can break his awesome power except kryptonite. I need some people to help me preach. Because when Superman comes into contact with kryptonite, his unbreakable self begins to break down. Ah, uh, but that's not the case when it comes to our God. Because there's nothing in all of creation, nothing in all of the universe that's able to break God's love and break God's power that he points towards you and me. And that's why somebody up in the house or in the day ought to be able to lift up your hands and give God praise for his love. Somebody up in here ought to be glad that he loves you in spite of you. Somebody ought to be glad that the Lord first loved you even before you loved him. Oh, come on, Baptist, and help me testify. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, come on, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Here's why, because he first loved me. So let me ask the question again. Is there anybody here who's glad that the Lord loves you? It is watch. He loves you. And that's why he's going to be faithful to you. But can I give you one more? He'll be faithful to you because when you need it most, he'll send some mercy your way. See, see, we can't shout off this. But let me help you see it. Grace is, watch, when God blesses you with what you don't deserve. But mercy is when God withholds from you what you do deserve. In other words, here it is, pay attention. When we're not faithful unto God, we deserve his wrath. When we're not faithful unto God, we actually deserve his chastisement and his punishment. Can, can we keep it real? I'm going to lose about half of y'all right here. But if the truth be told, Everybody in here is falling short. Everybody in here, you ain't being as faithful as you ought to be as it relates to our Lord and Savior. Preach, Pastor, I'm trying. Some of us ain't being faithful to our family. Some of us aren't being faithful as it relates to the gifts and talents God has given us. Some of, not, of us are not being faithful as it relates to the resources that God has blessed us with. Some of us are not being faithful as it relates to the call and the purpose that God has put on your life. We want God to bless us and do for us. But the problem is that far too many of us have grown content with doing as little as you can for God and God's house. But can I give you some good news? The good news is that even when we don't do what we're supposed to do, even when we're not faithful, God still blesses us with his mercy. In other words, he withholds from us what we actually deserve. And the shout on today, here it comes, is that morning by morning, <laughs> God blesses us with brand new mercies. Y'all missing it. Let me try it again. 
morning by morning God blesses you with a brand new chance to get things right morning by morning God cleans the slate erases the board from all the mistakes that you made on yesterday and gives you a brand new chance in a brand new day to get things right with him some of y'all still missing it when I was in the sixth grade I had a teacher named Miss McAvoy and what I loved about Miss McAvoy was that even when she invited you up to the front of the room and told you to spell a word on the board when you got the word wrong she never got mad at you here's what she did she took her eraser erased the word on the board smiled at you and said baby just try it again and all that I'm trying to tell you is that's exactly how God works every time you mess up he smiles at you wipes the board clean and says baby give it another shot is there anybody here who can lift up your hands and give God praise for mercy Stop by. Tell somebody. Great is thy faithfulness. He's been faithful to me. And I know he's been faithful to you too. Here it is. I'm done. Watch. He's faithful because he loves you. He's faithful because his mercy of his mercy towards you. But I'm going to give you one to shout about. Let's get up out of here. Watch. He's faithful because his goodness will follow you all the days. Y'all missing yourself. Okay, 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 watch. The psalmist said in the 23rd Psalm, your goodness and your mercy shall follow me. I need some people to read your Bible. All the days, not some days. But all the days of your life, that's how the psalmist said it. Here's how the Lamentations writer said it. Him said, the Lord is good to those who hope in him. It's right there in verse 25. He said, the Lord is good to those who hope in him. In other words, when you keep your hope rooted and anchored in the Lord, his goodness shall follow you all the days of your life. I need, okay, let me help you. I know some of y'all deep. Let me help you. Let me show it to you. Now watch, 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 watch. Remember now, the writer is suffering. Come here. He's, he's going through a season of strain, stress, and struggle. He's going through because Jerusalem has been destroyed. But if you know your Bible, if you keep on reading the Old Testament, what you'll discover is that in due season, I need some people who understand what due season is. I said at just the right time, God raised up a man named Ezra to return and build the temple in Jerusalem. But he didn't stop there. He raised up a man named Zerubbabel to return and build the altar in Jerusalem. Uh, but he didn't stop there. He then raised up a man named Nehemiah to come and build up the whole city of Jerusalem. In other words, God was faithful to Jerusalem and God was faithful to his people. His goodness kept on following them. And because God is good, he provided what the people needed to restore and rebuild all of Jerusalem. Here it is. I'm done. Our God is good. Let me say that again. Our God is good. You're, you're still missing it. Our God is good. I'm sorry to help you see it. Our God I said he's good. Our God is good. Our God, I'm telling you.
you he's good. And because he's good, watch, all that you need, his hands will provide. It may not come when you want it to come. It might not even come how you want it to come. But because God is good, he'll faithfully, faithfully provide exactly what you need and he'll provide it right on time. I heard a preach story, I heard a preach story. Now to get it, you got to pay attention and stay with a brother. Y'all ready? There's an old man, him had a farm and every season he would turn the soil, plant some seeds and get a harvest. But as time progressed, he got old and he could no longer turn the soil himself. So his son stepped up. His son would then turn the soil. Daddy would plant the seed and they would get a harvest. But one season, right before it was time to plant the seed, Junior got arrested and put in jail. Daddy could not plant the seeds and was therefore not going to get a harvest that year. He was depressed. So he sat down and he wrote his son a letter. And he sent the letter to the prison. And the letter simply said, son, I love you. I know you messed up. But even though I'm not going to be able to get a harvest this year, know that I still love you and I got your back. Son read the letter and he felt bad. This is what he did. He called his daddy that same night. Listen. He said, Daddy, listen to me carefully. All the evidence of my crime is buried in the field. Did you hear what I said, Dad? All the evidence of my crime been buried in the field. Hangs up the phone. As fate would have it, the FBI was eavesdropping on the phone call. They showed up the next day at daddy's house with bulldozers. And they began to turn over the soil. Daddy peeped what was going on. Grabbed the seed. Started following behind the FBI trucks. Seeding all of the ground. That same night, Junior called Daddy. Said, Daddy, I couldn't be there. But I'm so glad God provided what you needed through the FBI. All I'm trying to tell you is, it may not come when you want. It may not come how you want. But because God is good, he will provide everything that you need. The old saints used to say it this way. He may not come when you want him, but somebody here can testify that he's always right on time. Is there anybody here who can testify that God is good? Is there anybody here who can testify he will provide? Come on, is there anybody here who can testify great is thy faithfulness? Somebody say it. Come on, say it.